I mentioned to you before that I have, I've been using, working with the new Divine Canine Tarot that my husband gave me for Yule this year. And um, it has included with the booklet that is available as a PDF still at this time, a, what, a, a couple of tarot spreads, I think maybe just two. But one of them is um, called, it's called the Wolf Paw Spread which is a simple um, five card spread, which, you know, I like simple, <laughs> I like, well, I like all kinds of spreads, let's be honest, I like all kinds, but I, I do enjoy a five card spread a lot. And this one was interesting because this one is, of course, we're reading Wolf Energy today. And it, it's so timely for me, having just come off the wolf moon, the full moon energy of the wolf to me in my, in my practice. Um, to to feel what that that energy brings for me at this time, so I really wanted. To, I was real excited to do this reading, and um, I thought I'd share what I what I got. It's interesting what I got, and it's not gonna. It's a rather quick reading. It's something you can do. You don't have to have the wolf or the divine canine tarot to do it. Um, but I suggest if you're going to try to do this spread, that you think a little bit about the energy of a wolf. What is the what kind of energy, what part of the wolf energy are you trying to read? For me, you know, the wolf, uh, let me just say a few minutes about this. The wolf moon, at the wolf moon, we celebrate that usually as a group with, we, I've done it with a couple groups now. And um, part of any kind of ritual or anything that you have dealing with the wolf moon, there's usually a part in the ritual where everybody gives out wolf howls, the howls of a wolf. The howling of a wolf where you throw back your head and you put your, your face up to the moon, howling at the moon, and you give out a loud howl. Put yourself into it. Put yourself into it. Howl. And keep doing it until you feel the energy. Feel the energy. Now, people, there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy about what a wolf is howling at. What is what is that howling at the moon? Are they howling at the moon? No, they're not howling at the moon. <laughs> I don't think they are. I really don't think they are. But um, we see the image, and I'm sure people that were out out in the areas populated by wolves at night under a full moon might have seen that silhouette that we see so often photographed of the wolf in the moonlight. That gives a really lovely image. What happens at this time of the year when the wolves are out howling around? They're looking for food. The food in the middle of winter, especially where they usually live, are is very scarce. It's harder to find. So but this is a good time for them to find. Some descriptions say that they might find the carcasses of dead animals places um, that have perished because they were not able to find food. So maybe that that's a little re more readily available. Some animals show up a little better in the snow because of their coloring, they're easier to spot. Maybe their tracks are even easier to follow. So um, predators of the wolf are, I mean, they, <laughs> the predator, the wolf predator um, has a little bit of an advantage over the small animals that he usually preys on at this time of the year. So the howling is a communication with the other members of the pack to tell you. That's how they communicate with the howling, right? It's a communication. When we use it in ritual form, we're communicating to the energies of that primal feeling of being in our own feet, <laughs> if I can say. Being in our, you know, when we talk about being grounded, we're not very grounded right now. We're all sort of hiding out in our homes and and things are just, are never, are never the same, right? Things are not normal to us right now. We're off, we're off, off center a little bit. We need that feeling of being, standing firmly on the ground. Standing firmly and balanced on the ground, not just necessarily balanced, but firm in our feet. 
when we take steps that we're, we're, we're deliberate in where we are standing, deliberate in where we are walking, which the wolf is something very deliberate where the wolf is going. Wolves don't usually go out for strolls. I don't think they do. They might go out for strolls, but I don't think they go out for strolls. When they go out, it's a mission. If you have a dog and you regularly walk your dog or you occasionally walk your dog, or now, since we're in quarantine, if you remember walking your dog, <laughs> um, you might notice that even a dog, a domestic dog, when they're walking out with their pack, which would be you or whoever's with them, um, other dogs perhaps, are very deliberate in where they're going. They're very deliberate in how they get to where they're going. Even if you're leading them on the lead, they're very deliberately going. They never just stroll it's an older dog might stroll but a younger dog with any vitality usually about it usually is quite deliberate looking around very keen on the surroundings very keen to the smells around them very keen to this to the sounds very clean right well that's what we want to do when we're channeling that wolf energy we want to be keen we want to be very keen on our surroundings we want to be keen on where we are placing our feet, what steps we are taking, we are making sure steps, not just that we're balanced and we're not going to fall over, that we feel secure. No, that we are taking sure steps like a wolf with purpose. So that is the purpose of the, to me, <laughs> your, your opinions may vary, but to me, that's the purpose of this howling that we like to do, like the wolf, to channel that wolf energy at the full moon, at the full moon. It doesn't have to happen in at the full moon. It does not have to happen at a full moon even. But the feel, something that connects you with that kind of an energy is a really strong energy. You know, some people, for, for them, the wolf is an animal that is with them all the year. They work with them. It could be their totem. It could be, you know, um, that they, they, that energy of the wolf is something that's very vital to their spirituality okay so I thought this was a very interesting spread because this spread in the book and I wish I could hold the book up for you but it's on a PDF because I don't have the book yet but it is shaped in a paw print it is meant to be the paw print of a wolf where the pad of the wolf is the focus of the reading the focus of the reading okay and it says what is the problem or what is an obstacle that I'm facing at this time? Trying to focus. We might think we have a lot of problems. We might think we want to have a not we might have a lot of obstacles. Right now we're looking at one particular obstacle or problem right now. Okay. And then we see the four toes. And we go four toes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna change my camera to show you a layout. Four toes and the and the toes say firstly, um, where should my focus be? The next one, what should be, what do I need to learn? What is the lesson I'm going to get out of this? Whatever this obstacle is I have to face, right? Um, who can I turn to for help? Is there help around there for me? Is it even available for me? And lastly, where is this leading me? Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay, so I'm going to change my camera and let you see what I got. I thought it was interesting. And you might think it's interesting too. Give you another little clue. Give you another little close up of the cards in the Divine Canine. By, by who? By Zach Liu. Zach Liu. Okay, let me change my camera. I put an extra light up here for you, hoping that you can see my cards a little better. It's getting to be pretty late in the day. So I'm really losing a lot of my light, but I think you can see well enough. Um, these cards are supposed to represent, I, it's a little hard for me to do when it's, um, when I'm in such close quarters here with my camera, but this would represent the paw of the foot and then the four toes, four toes, if you look at a paw print. And I do want to say something interesting that happened when I was dealing my cards, um, that I got two cards showed up in the reverse, and 
I was, I was making a decision whether to read them in the reverse or not. Now, I'm going to be doing, coming up in the next week or so, I'm going to be doing a video on how I read reversals, what I do about reversals in cards. I've mentioned it in the past a few times, but I'm not going into the details too much about different ways that sometimes we can look at reversals and whether I read them or not, or what, when do I decide to read them or when do I decide not to read them, because I do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I want to note that I, I saw the two of these cards when I dealt them were in the reverse. And that was the Ace of Cups here and the Sun here. And um, so I really wanted to look at the reversals of those two, of the meanings, what the book had to say about those two cards being in reverse, uh, specific to this deck. And then, of course, um, realizing, of course, that all of these cards are being read at a time of year where I am in the shadow. I consider myself to be in the shadow. I'm considering myself doing shadow work all the time, doing the dark part of the year. It's not that all my, all my readings are in shadow, but I always, pretty much always, every reading I do at this time of the year, I really do consider the shadow side of each card and um, and how that might affect the reading. Okay, so that's what I, I kind of did today. I really did uh, specifically pay attention to the reversals of these cards. And what I do want to say is when I got, especially when I got to the Ace of Cups here, which was my first card, card number one, because the question we at is asking for card number one, what problem or obstacle am I facing? Well, <laughs> the Ace of Cups is a very positive card. It usually means, you know, some kind of new um, um, it could be a new uh, relationship. It could be some, you know, kind of a new kind of an emotion, something, you know, like a it, it's usually positive. In other words, it's usually very positive. It's a, usually a positive card. So, since I'm also looking at an obstacle or I'm looking at a problem that I'm supposed to be facing, I really needed to look at that reverse. So I thought that was interesting that it came up for me and it made in reverse. And it was something that I really needed to look at. Okay, so with this deck, it says the reverse of the Ace of Cups has everything to do with um, being just overflowing with emotion. Being overflowing. And we can see this if I can hold this up. But you can see a little better. It's pretty, I think you can see that pretty well. Um, here's the wolf. You know, the, the, sh the, the card is full of water. There's a waterfall behind him. The waterfall is coming down with great force, and it's, you know, really hitting the water hard. So the emotions are really, and he's leaping. He's, he's not steady, and he's not contemplating. He's not feeling. He's not, you know, getting vibes from the water. He's like really, it's really moving him. He's, be, he's moving so fast that here the cup is, is looks like it's toppled over from the movement of the, either the water or from him. So the, they're just, it's a very turbulent, it's, it's overflowing so many emotions. And it says if you feel like your emotions are getting in your way, <laughs> if your emotions are getting in your way, now's the time to, to rein them a little bit, to take a little control. Okay. And... I think we've all talked about this, and I've talked about it in my videos before. I'm really, my emotions are all over the place right now. I'm really, um, I think I'm, my life is really being run in a lot of ways by my emotions. As a matter of fact, I sometimes have trouble getting things done <laughs> during the course of the day because of what emotions I'm feeling or, or dreams that I've been having or whatever. So it's really, it has been affecting me. So I found this to be really right on. This is really right on card to come up right now. It also says that you can be bottling up your emotions that I might have to release them. I don't think that's my problem. <laughs> I'm a triple cancer. I don't usually have a problem bottling up my emotions. My emotions kind of explode out of me all the time. So I don't think there's ever a question in anybody's mind exactly how I'm feeling about anything. But an interesting thought. <laughs> an interesting thought. And it says don't allow to become to become numb and afraid to afraid to be happy you know I sort of feel that a little bit bit not that I'm afraid to be happy but 
every time something good happens, I kind of, I'm, I'm getting suspicious of a lot of things like that. I, I sometimes, I, it's like I'm protecting myself from a hurt. I think we do that. We protect ourselves from a hurt, trying to be too happy. <laughs> so, that was really spot on kind of a card for me. Okay. So we'll move on here. And the next card, the next one is where, where should the focus be? Where should my focus be? And here we have the four of coins. And of course the four of coins is the four of pentacles. And I don't think that's a glare on the card. I think it's, I do have another light in here. I just think it's, you know, they're kind of dark. The cards are kind of dark. And then a very bright light here for the four of coins. Um, so, which is interesting because here it shows you where you should be focusing, right? It says um, that, um, now this was not in the shadow, and I'm not reading this in the shadow necessarily, but I wondered, it was interesting what the meat card was meaning. Um, it says, you're very financially stable right now due to the fact of how conservative you are with your money, and being safe and secure is important, but you must guard against greed, which will lead to unhappiness. Well, I'm not greedy. I don't consider myself to be greedy, but um, I think I'm, I'm, I have a tendency to become almost too frugal sometimes, but I take it as a personal challenge. You know, I told you I was doing January and Candyberry where I was trying to shop and now we're living off of our inventory. We're trying to live as much as we, our inventory as we can. And I really get into that, but I don't want to be crazy about it. You know, I, I have to remind myself, I don't want to be crazy about it. If it's, you know, we can afford, <laughs> we can afford to do, you know, certain things right now. So we should, you know, we're not, we're not in a bad financial state right now. So, um, I don't consider that I would have to be greedy, but of course, you know, especially at my age, a lot comes with the fact that you, you want to be careful because, when we spend our money, it's gone. I mean, we have to realize that when we're spending for the most part. I mean, that's sort of oversimplification, but it's kind of true at this time in our life. But I did look, even though this card was not in the shadow or it was not reversed, I did look at a caution because I like to look at cautions in every deck. You know that in every card, there's both positive and negative in every card. And the caution here was um, about making sure you don't isolate yourself. And that's you can see he's up a tree with his money. <laughs> he's up a tree. He doesn't want people to take his money, so he, he's gone up a tree. Just be safe so we can watch out for danger, watch out for any threat, um, any threat coming, approaching threat. But this being guarded has put him in isolation. And this does not mean the isolation that we're experiencing now with the pandemic. What this realize, what the isolation they're meaning is, is don't be so stingy with your possessions that you separate yourself from others. So, um, I think that's, you know, being safe and being, uh, alone are really two different things, but sometimes they go hand in hand. They seem to be going hand in hand right now. And that's definitely food for thought. So I might want to, I might want my, why well, I want to put my focus in on how can I reach out to people more? How can I be around people more. How can I? This is a perfect time for me to consider. Yes, I need to get my tarot class scheduled done, so we can get the tarot classes up and running. I need to see some, some of your beautiful faces, <laughs> sitting here with me at my table. Um, I think that's where the focus could be for me right now. Okay, the next card, card number three. I received the seven of cups. And the Seven of Cups, you know, is all about the, um, the, there's, there's so many, there's so many, uh, choices available on the, in the right away. It's all the cups of all the things and it, looking up, trying to choose all so many things to choose from for so many decisions, you know, decisions to make, um, not knowing what's false or what's true opportunity, etc. Well, the Seven of Cups here on this deck, um, is wanting you to deal with reality versus your dreams. What is real and what is just a pipe dream? Okay. And um, so it's not necessarily about making choices. It's about paying attention to what is real and what is not. And I love the way this is this is drawn here with the 
you know, the very blurred. <laughs> he's hunting down rabbits here. He's chasing rabbits up here and it's all blurry. You can see that it's not, the rabbits aren't around him. He's wishing for it. He's wishing for it with the cup. He's hoping and dreaming about catching rabbits, but he's not out actually catching rabbits, is he? He's standing still. Caught up in the dream of catching rabbits. So, um, it says that you might be caught up in fantasy. You also may be caught up in your worry. And that's another, that's another, um, thing. It says get out of your head and move forward. Wishful thinking will help you reach, will not help you reach your goals. Make a realistic plan of action so you can move forward. Well, I certainly need to do that. I really need to, um, I need to, <laughs> I need to, you know, get out of my head. I do, I'm in my head too much. I'm in my head too much. Now, but this is a seven of cups. This is a cup. It's not a, it's not a sword. So it's not so much about in your head, your thoughts. It's about in your feelings, in your reactions, in your fantasy, in your dreams, in your desires, right? Not in your ideas. It's not that. The ideas are important, but you notice I have no swords in this reading. I have no swords. Okay, so that doesn't have play any of my thoughts, my plans, specific ideas are not a part of this reading. I think that's important when you're doing a reading that you pay attention no matter how, whatever the card says, whatever the book says, whatever your mind says about the card, you need to pay attention to the number, you need to pay attention to the, to the suit. You need to pay attention to visit a minor or major account of card. It's part of the deck. That's that's part of the game of tarot, if you want to call it a game. It's part of the it's part of the job you have as a tarot reader to make sure you pay attention to all of those things. They're important. If it wasn't important, everything would be one suit. This isn't an oracle deck. This is a tarot deck. So there are suits. So this has to do with dreaming versus reality, not ideas, too many ideas that I have to choose from. That's nothing to do. Okay. Okay. I hope I made that clear. If I did not make it clear, sign up for tarot class. <laughs> I'll make it clear in tarot class. Okay. I love this card. Oh, this rant card is so beautiful. The lion and the, um, I forget what kind of a dog this is. It's a, it's a wild dog, like a Eh, I don't know what it is. It's some kind of a wild dog, but it's it's not a wolf, but it is a canine. It's a, another kind of a wild dog. It is a natural, um, these two animals are naturally enemies. And here they are sitting, he's sitting on his head. I love it. The beautiful, oh, the, the coloring on here is just, is gorgeous. This is really a really gorgeous card. Um, and this card is number four. And this says, who can I turn to for help? Who can I turn to for help? Well, this is interesting because it's not turned to your enemy for help. <laughs> That's not what this card is saying. Strength card is all about the inner strength. Okay, uh, It's not about physical strength. And in this case, it's very much about the beast inside you. The lion may be representing the beast inside me. Um, I need to try to tame that beast inside me. What's the beast inside me? The beast inside me is the one that um, acts out emotionally, acts out just my instinctual instinctual behaviors come out. It's like it's like knee jerk reaction, right? I'm angry. I'm I'm sad. Like it's 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 kind of primal, and it's it's not productive. It's not productive. Yeah. It talks about using the inner strength that I have to try to resolve the conflicts that I have coming from a place of love and understanding, not reacting to it and emotionally. Okay. Keeping a space, a soft space, a safe space for yourself and others and learn to respect differences. I do have a great respect for differences in people and differences in all things. But when it does come down to things that affect me personally, I'm very emotional. I do admit that. And I know that's that's a problem that I have. And I I think this is a card that I really do need to heed this advice. Who can I turn to for help then is turn to myself for help. Turn to my inner strength for help. Turn to the part of me that I know 
It's the way I should be acting, not the way I am acting. And finally, I said the last card here was the sun card. Look at that sweet little, oh, his sweet little nose turned up to the sky. It's just feeling the sun, feeling the rays of the sun coming down on his face. So beautiful with all the little dandelions and flowers in the field around him. And it's a gorgeous. And it says, where is this leading to? Now, remember I said this card was in, it was in reversal, but the sun, well, so we can look at it as a reversal. Um, you know, if it were not, it would be about all about success, all about, you know, things are going to get better, everything's yay, things are great, right? Um, but, you know, we can read the reversal, but the thing is, the sun is always a positive card always positive. So even in the reversal, it's more of a um, challenge. Like it says, it, it, we, it may indicate you're having a hard time seeing what's positive in your life. Maybe that's true. Maybe I am having a hard time. Maybe I'm, I'm not paying much enough attention to what's positive in my life. Um, and also, maybe I'm not realizing that a lot of the things that will make me happy, I am directly responsible for. I'm not, other people are not responsible for them making it happen for me. So I think that's a reminder in that way. Okay. I, in closing, I would just like to say that I liked the reading. It was a nice reading. I liked the layout of the reading. That was interesting. It's a very good one, especially for the deck. But it's good for any deck. It would work for any deck. Um, I like the cards. The cards are really lovely. They're beautiful. It's not going to be my everyday deck because it's a little limiting for me, of course. But I'm I'm happy to use it right now. I really love that. I love to be able to, you know. I used to be a one trick pony. <laughs> I used to just do everything with my um, Hoi Polloi deck, and I I'm really enjoying working with these other decks. I have to say that. Um, but. The thing that I miss in these theme theme decks are I really miss, first of all, this one has no people in it. Not that I need people, but sometimes the people and the fact that there are people play an important part of the reading. So that's some that's something that's, that's kind of lacking. Also, um, the relationship between the cards. Um, for me, this kind of a deck doesn't, uh, you know, the, the relationship between how one card is played off another card opposite or beside it or it, it sometimes it's difficult with these kind of decks so I always I always I always advise people especially people that are new to tarot yes buy the theme decks that you love absolutely buy them don't put off buying them you should buy what you want have what you want but if you're one of if you're serious about learning to read tarot please get yourself some kind of um, standard system deck like a Rider Waite ish for Rider Waite version. There's so many versions of the Rider Waite deck. And as a matter of fact, when you come to my tarot classes, I do actually require that of the students that they have some kind of a Rider Waite based deck because that's the system that we're working with. You can apply those lessons to just to any deck after that. That's even decks. A lot of the lessons that we're that we're learning, you can you can you can apply to any kind of a deck. A pip deck you can use it too because we talk about numerology and we also talk about you know um, you know so things that would work with that we um, also so Marseille deck you know that it, it's fine you can go back you can go over it a little bit the systems are a little different but not enough that you're gonna need a whole new class necessarily but anyway once you get that kind of a deck you you start to realize how the cards are so there's so much to them, which is why Rider Waite system has lasted so long, because there's so many, there's so much involved in the reading. So many, and not to make it more complicated, but to make it more interesting. To make it so, why do you think people? Would, I don't get sick of reading because I'm still learning something new all the time, and that's what makes it fun. It makes it fun that cards give you a new opportunity every time you deal them. This kind of a deck. I like, and I think for these simpler readings, it works really well. But, and especially at different times of the year, I think it works really well. So I think it's important to have. I totally support it. If you love, if you love wolves, 
or dogs even, that kind of canine energy. This is a deck. I hope you look, you check it out and, and give it a try because it's nice. But it should not be your only deck. I just want to say, honestly, I don't think it should be your only deck. Okay, that's all. <laughs> that's all. Thank you so much for watching. And um, as always, I'm Rebecca, and I wish you blessings. <laughs>